Welcome back, Camden Catholic. So, we left off with uh, talking about barbarians, right? We're talking about how barbarian culture is actually not nearly as barbaric as the Romans were always saying, right? Because barbarians simply meant a person that they couldn't understand. But as time went on, with the connotation of the word changing over time, uh, eventually people are going to start saying, well, a barbarian is an uncivilized person, right? Well, they actually weren't that uncivilized. The people who called them uncivilized were the Romans, and to Romans, everyone was uncivilized by comparison. So they also, the main thing is they conquered in pursuit of mainly resources. Like, where it says land right here, they're not expansionists, okay? Barbarians didn't look to, like, grow as an empire. They're much more about staying alive. You understand what I'm saying? Ah, 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 staying alive. Now, anyway, so... In your mind, usually most people think of that when they think barbarian, right? You think of huge dude, no shirt, six swords, blah, 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 blah. Not the case, right? Actually, ironically enough, that's what a barbarian looks like. So you have iron weapons, uh, you know, typical, like, tunic, garb, cotton, like, I mean, that's just basic, you know what I mean? It's just like, he looks like a, like, like a Walmart version of a Roman soldier. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's a very, very, very basic version of just another old soldier. It's not a big deal. But you know what? Barbarians don't judge us, okay? Like, don't judge the barbarians. They're not that bad. They had kings and governments, sort of. They were small, you know what I mean? But they created money, eventually, and they also settled all of Europe and they knew the origin of its current day people. So, hmm. Like, I, for example, am descendant of Anglo-Saxons and Native Americans, right? So, ha! Take that. Now, anyway, and the Anglo-Saxons were a type of barbarian. They were originally the Angles and the Saxons, and then they, like, actually came together and made Anglo-Saxons, and they fought off the Vikings, so take that, nerds. Um, anyway, so, check it out. Let's keep going. So, the barbarian invasions came from a lot of different places. From Asia, you had the Huns and the Magyars, which are actually Romans and Eastern Europeans. The Magyars are actually also Hungarian, um, so, Bulgarians, Romanians, all that stuff. And then from the Germanic North was the Saxons, the Angles, and Western Europe, right? And so there's actually, really quick, underneath Goths right there, right, several different types. Because there's actually tons of different types of Goths. There are, yeah, there we go, there are Ostrogoths, there are Visigoths, there, uh, like, there are, um, like, like, anyway, sorry. The Ostrogoths settled the Italian peninsula. The Visigoths settled modern-day Spain. The Angles and the Saxons are the modern-day British. And then the Franks were all of Central Europe, including uh -uh. most French people, right? Uh, Hence, Frank French. So, anyway. So, like, it's a very, very large rise of these people that they everyone called Germanic people, okay? Now, Germanic just mainly meant anyone who was or was not conquered by the Romans, and the Germanics usually typically spoke their own very own language. Now, we'll talk about some other stuff like that tomorrow, speaking of how they, like, impacted our society today. But the barbarians are going to begin to organize, okay? So because this is just a natural development of human people, you eventually become more organized. Barbarian tribes eventually put hereditary leaders into power. See, they had governments eventually. They would begin to make permanent settlements in Europe and begin to make trade items. See, money-based economy eventually. And then they even single-handedly destroyed all things intelligent value and that the world would produce up to this point. Whoops. So... The barbarians are responsible for a giant step backwards in science and learning, but we all know the Romans were doing a lot of weird stuff anyway, so are we that upset about it? Uh, so, let's keep going, though. This guy was the first real, like, barbarian organizer, all right? So, his name is Clovis, okay? Now, for all we know, he may or may not have actually been a Roman military leader, maybe possibly a governor of one of these provinces, a lot like who again? Good job, friggin', excuse me, good job, Lillian. Good job, right? A lot like Julius Caesar was the governor of Gaul, and he was a Roman emperor at one point, Clovis may have very, also very well have been a leader. Now, he established the Frankish kingdom, and he's considered the father of the French people. So go ahead and write that down, father of the French people. Uh-huh, croissant. Anyway, so, conquered many competing tribes and regional Roman political leaders. Now, converted to Christianity because his wife made him, all right? So I'm going to tell you that story tomorrow, but it's actually really, really funny. So remind me to tell you the story of why Clovis became a Christian, okay? So remember, why did Clovis become a Christian? Write that down. So anyway, he also actually helped spread Christianity a little bit further. 
That's about where his accomplishments start. Stop, though. He's considered the founder of France. Uh, who cares? Now, anyway, conquered a huge area while spreading no intelligence, unfortunately, though. So he actually consolidated all of these people, but under his reign, no art came from it. No music came from it. No, like, major intellectual value or, like, leaps forward out of this, quote-unquote, dark ages came from it. So he even called the law he created Roman law. Attaboy, Clovis. So... But then we're going to go from Clovis, who's not that special, and he actually consolidated that area. It's called the Frankish Kingdom, right? It includes all of France and then parts of modern-day Germany, Belgium, and some of the Netherlands as well. So that is the Frankish Kingdom in 768. Now, a lot of this is like a lot of you are thinking, wow, well, that's actually really big if you consolidate all those people. Remember, there's a lot of empty space between, okay? Like there's not tons of people living all over the place at this point. Um, anyway, so... Let's keep going, though. But this dude is the man. He is the absolute man. He has even got, like, man-sounding things in his name. He is Charlemagne. All right? Anyway, now, so very, very powerful, very strong Christian leader, right? He is an absolute boss. So he created the Carlonian Empire out of what was left of the Roman Empire and is considered the father of modern-day Europe, even though, ironically enough, it's a continent for no reason but still right like he's considered the father of this non-continental hunk of junk so anyway but charlemagne absolutely phenomenal leader so crowned by pope leo the third as the very first holy roman emperor really freaking quickly underline holy roman emperor okay because this is going to be what's left over of the stretch of the catholic church right the Holy Roman Empire for a long time was actually a very, very large country, okay? And then we'll talk about that later on. Now, he's also known as Charles the Great. He is known as the father of Europe. He united the barbarian tribes in Western Europe and brought actually about a lot of stability. Now, remember, this is all still during the early Middle Ages, right? His dad's name was Pepin the Short. <laughs> now, we actually think it might have been Pepin the Younger, but still, Pepin the Short, that's hilarious. Now, anyway, so... This is the conquest of Charlemagne. So Charlemagne eventually is going to go all the way from down here in Rome, and his entire conquest is going to go and take up all of that stuff, right? So very, very impressive when you think about it. He also like really grew a lot of things from his like from Clovis as a predecessor. So the warrior culture from Scandinavia, also known as the Vikings, actually had a really, really big influence on this crap. Because right now, you've just got Clovis and Charlemagne, these two guys that are actually consolidating people together and doing more of a job of, like, creating a system of, I don't know, taxation probably, uh, just kind of keeping people from murdering each other, like barbarian status. The Vikings, though, are going to play a huge impact because they spent most of their time raiding all of Europe, right? Like, doing a big job of... Uh, taking all of the, any gold that they could find, resources, women. They were very well known for stealing women. Um, they were establishment settlements all the way throughout Europe. And actually, the Vikings are the first people to discover North, North America. Don't let your old, old teachers lie to you about Columbus. Even though, ironically enough, when you think about it, the Native Americans discovered America first. Yeah. So anyway, now, their raids led to the establishment of feudalism, right? So as their raids were going through and they were killing a lot of peasants in the countryside, a lot of them started complaining to the kings and the lords of the land that we're not protected. So that feudal system is going to be designed because of the Viking raids, okay? So here you go. As you can see right here, the Vikings came from everywhere. They came from the uh, the net or excuse me the Nordic area all the way through Iceland down past they all like they even raided parts of Constantinople. I mean like they're huge. You understand what I'm saying? They're like going through everything, and this is also still early Middle Ages, but they led to the establishment of feudalism. Okay, so we are actually going to stop right there. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your evening, Camden Catholic, and I will talk to y'all tomorrow.